Hey everybody, let's get started here. This uh, recording is for level one candidates who are taking their exam in the uh, upcoming weeks. Uh, I've been getting this question very often um, via email, text message, WhatsApp, you know, contact us form on my website. And it seems to be a recurring theme. And uh, the question is, Nathan, which calculations do I need to know or which formulas do I need to know to pass the level one exam. If this is interesting to you and you wanna have an answer to this and you wanna understand this better, keep listening on. But in the meantime, please press the subscribe button and the notifications button at this time so that you can continue to receive these updates when I post them on a weekly or bi-weekly basis for level one and as a level two and a future level three candidate. All right, let's get started. Calculations. Now I know as a level one candidate, when you look at the learning ecosystem or actually even the online curriculum, which is really the same, um, and you look at the pages, you see a lot of math, a lot of formulas, a lot of calculations. And you know, you get intimidated by that, especially if you're not if you don't have a mathematical background or you basically stink at math. But really, the answer to the question is you really shouldn't worry about math too much on the level one exam. The CFA Institute has said this over and over again. Maybe it's bypassed or you didn't see it, but uh, the answer is that no more than 30% of the questions on a CFA level one exam can be asked. In other words, 30% of your 180 questions, which makes 54. That's the max. So then you say, oh, there's gonna be 54 questions. No, you didn't listen correctly. That's the max. Now, if I had to guesstimate, or if you will, estimate how many questions I think actually have a mathematical application to them, I'd probably say it's closer between 20, 22, maybe at the most 25%. Now, remember, you have two hours and 12 minutes, 12 minutes for each session. <clears throat> so the calculations cannot be very complicated. They cannot be very, you know, in depth. Uh, they can't ask you to do a internal rate of return calculation for 17 years of cash inflows and outflows from a portfolio. You could never do that. And nor would you want to if it's, all, if it's only worth a point and a half. Spend more time with something else and maybe come back to it later on and just, I don't know, if you can't get a guess and answer, maybe you'll be lucky. But you really shouldn't be focused on calculations. Now, I know why you're also asking this question because people tell me this all the time. Nathan, I was doing this mock exam from XYZ company or ABC company, or I heard on Reddit, blah, 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 blah. Or somebody told me or a friend told me, don't listen to that nonsense. Okay. This is not a math test. You will have to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, square roots, and exponents as the CFA Institute says you will but you're not gonna be sitting there and calculating the natural logs and E to X and all, you know, any kind of esoteric formulas or using the financial functions on your calculators to a huge extent. You might have a cash flow uh, function or a bond uh, calculation that you'll be using your calculators for. But I, don't, but I don't think you should keep worrying about this. Now, what I always tell the candidates who are working with me, if you're not sure about a calculation, if you need to know it or not, and you're kind of worried, check my must know list. They all get a secret sauce book and in that secret sauce book are the formulas that I suggest for them to know. And they usually check it and if they see it on there, they know that they should know it. And if they don't see it on there, they can relax and figure that, hey, it's probably not you know, that important. But if you're going to focus your entire remaining time of studying on calculations, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be focusing on 30% of your exam and you're gonna be leaving the other 70%, which is content, which is gonna be descriptive, qualitative, uh, you know, de not definitional, but integrating concepts, you know, to chance, and you don't wanna do that. So don't play the game like that, and really stop worrying about the calculations, because with a minute and a half to do each one, it can't be that rigorous. Okay, now, um, can they ask an esoteric formula? Yeah. Maybe they'll ask one, or if you're unlucky, two. But is that what you're really studying for? That one or two questions that don't re aren't really going to matter in the big scheme because it's not going to help you to pass or cause you to fail, probably. Okay, because you don't really pass or fail the exam by one or two questions. Anyhow, 
So what I'm recommending to you is focus on the content, make sure that the mock exams that you do are reputable, that they're of quality, that they're not just every question asking you a calculation or that they look like end of chapter questions from the Q or the Q bank. Make sure that they are questions that integrate the material and get you to think because that's exactly what you're gonna to have to do on exam day, okay? Is actually think and bring together multiple learning outcome statements, multiple readings and multiple concepts to answer the question. For example, you'll need to know the difference between the sharp ratio and the information ratio. Or maybe you'll need to know how to apply a forward contract to currency to cur to, to to currencies and to decide which one you're going to buy and sell and how many units. That's what really this exam is about. It's not about who can calculate, you know, uh, I don't know, some crazy formula like the covariance formula where you have x minus x bar, y minus y bar, blah blah blah. Whether it's n minus one, n minus two. I mean, even I don't memorize that stuff. There's no reason to. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm making this a little bit longer than I'd like to. Focus on the content. Stop worrying about the calculations. They're going to be there. But if you've done enough mock exams, done enough practice questions, sample questions, QBank questions, you shouldn't be surprised by any formula or any calculation on your level one exam. And if you're studying, good luck and focus on the content. Focus on the descriptive, qualitative, um, analytical components and how everything fits together and let the calculations fall by the side and you'll see that you'll have a much easier time with the real exam. Good luck to you and stay in touch. Bye-bye.